So next I would do the dimensioning. So basically you just click on your dimension right here, click on each of the endpoints. Okay, so I don't really like that type of dimensioning. It's up to you what you prefer or what the, they're gonna want, but you can do that in here, dimensions. Uh, so endpoints, slash dot. There we go. That's better. I'll go back and delete this. So, and then there's also a few different things you can do with your dimensioning to play around with if you want to. You can make them dimension outside. You can make it centered. Update dimension. So if you're making a change, you can always just do that. Select all dimensions, update all dimensions. So now you can see what your changes do. It's in the line. Also units, I'm usually in one decimal place. So there, everything changed to the one decimal place. So I know that we usually have to do um, our dimensions in feet. So basically what I would do, um, you know, if you start in meters or I measure in meters and then convert to feet, basically what you can do is go up here to your window, model info, and in your units here, you can change it to feet now. And these automatically just update the feet. So you don't have to worry about, even if you started dimensioning already, it doesn't matter. They will automatically update for you. I'm just going to finish dimensioning this. Oops. Again, if you select something that you didn't want, just hit escape. There we go. I'm just using the wheel key on my mouse to, to uh, zoom in and out when I'm doing this. And again, to get back to kind of your view of where you're going to print, it's going to be this. Now this looks a little bit uh, muddled in here. I'm going to do a right click, text position, outside the end, so you can see that brings us out. And then this one, I think I will take this and put it outside the start. Just so you can kind of see, might make it a little bit easier to read. Hopefully it's not confusing. I know sometimes when we get with dimension, it can be a little bit too much and maybe confusing, but... <coughs> excuse me. Now to um, dimension your exposures, you're going to need to... It won't let you just take this it wants to snap to something so it's either going to snap to this which is not really your dimension so as you can see see it won't just let you snap to somewhere in there so basically what you do is you have to draw a line from the two so you can see you draw a line there line from this exposure perpendicular There we go. Same thing here. Move the toolbar out of the way. So I'm just kind of waiting. When you get that pink line, that's when you know it's perpendicular. So now I have all my lines to my exposure, so I can go back and grab my dimension tool, click one end. In the other end and don't move anything I just click it again you can see the green dots go away and that way it's just gonna stay straight okay 
So now you just need to go back and with your select tool, you can see that it's selecting the line and not the dimension. Just delete that off so that there's not a big, sometimes it will try to select the dimension. You can see that the 53 here is uh, selected. So you're just going to want to try not to select that. Sometimes it can be a bit finicky that way. Hmm. There we go. Yeah, sometimes it's a bit of a pain, that one. And you just have to be careful in there. Whenever you intersect, um, intersect another line it chops the line up so we drew this line across here and it actually chops it up into three segments because we're crossing this line and this line so it's one two and three okay so there we go we have everything dimensions now um, now you're going to want to add your text next there's two ways you can do this um, see how it has a little arrow key so you grab it from your toolbar here um, if you don't if there's not enough room and you need the the leader line then you can see the blue dot here that's where your arrow is going to drop so you click once and then you come out here and then you can type in your information on story combustible Residential, same thing. It's it's pretty much the same thing all around. It's the same thing. Grab your guy here. Oops. Better. Okay. And if you were to put this way over here. This is where you kind of why you got to do your lettering last. It might change the position. See how everything kind of changed a bit because you put the text way over here. Um, if you're drawing anything outside of kind of where it was thinking everything is, then um, then it's going to reposition everything. So you just want to be careful about that. That's all. That's and that's why you want to do your lettering last. Now the other way you can do it too is if you don't want to use the leader line and you want have enough room inside your blue, the, the building area that you want to put in, you can always just drop it like that and hit paste and that way you don't get any leader lines and you just use your select tool, select it and then M for move and you can always just move it inside if you didn't want to use the leader lines. And again the road name is uh, Henry Street. And then also you can put in your building areas, which, let's see, so in this one I actually had a, this right here, has a two story. Okay, so this section right here was a two-story. You can see the blue went away um, just from me deleting something in there. To get it back, you can easily just draw another line and it'll come back as long as that area is closed off. So this here is a two-story. This here is a one-story area. So basically what I am going to do here is do this and say uh, two-story. And um, this is the risk, so I'm just going to put the um, what it what is in here. Um, so 
something like that. Um, and then here, just put here one story. Um, sheets. This is where the sheets of curling ice are. Um, and then you also want to make sure you put in your area. So again, this is where I'm going to say where you want to be careful to make sure that you're at your zoom all. Once you start placing text, you can see this has moved now, um, probably because we put this out here. So I'll go back to my select tool, grab that and move it back into place. If you, there's some stuff that we have to put in here in the building. So once you do that too, that's going to move as well. So let's see, I'm going to go here, building areas, ground floor. Oh yes, yeah, so I have it in meters, so I'm just going to do it in meters for now, but it should be in square feet. And total building, there's no basement. So, so it should be actually square meters, but I didn't convert it yet because I didn't I didn't have to actually do a sketch for this one. Um, so this should be in square feet. This should match everything in your BVS. And the other things that you have to do is do the story height. So this is one section is a two story, which equals. I'm just going to say it is 16 feet. So whatever your height is and you that's supposed to go to the top left corner of your building. So this is the two story section. And then there is another one story section. And this also equals 16 feet. So spacebar, move, M to move, and you can see the drawing's already repositioned. So it can be kind of a kind of a pain, but we will move this back to here. Okay. And what other information do we need? We need the roof construction, which is wood joists and the wall construction, which is concrete block. So the wood joist goes up in the top right, the roof construction, the building here. This is also wood joist. And then your concrete block. Bottom right. And the bottom right. Delete these off. Let's hit this again. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. We got the street name. We got the story height. This and the height of the building. The number of stories height of the building. We have the roof construction, the wall construction on the right hand side. Lower right. We have our exposures. We have our road. And uh, one last thing here, I would just label this as parking lot. And that's kind of a rough, um, rough way to do your sketch. That's kind of gives you an idea. It's gonna, there might be some uh, individual things where you might need to, a little bit more, a little bit less. Now to export this, you're gonna come up here and go to File, Export 2D Graphic. And again, you're just going to, you know, export it by your, well, however you're keeping your files. Export. And that's it. Just make sure you save that. Because that way, if you save it like this, then if there's any changes that need to be made, you can come back and change it.